At a table in the cafe, James is waiting. As we arrive, he glances up and smiles. He tells us that he's planned a concert. The date's decided, tickets will be printed, friends invited, yes, it will happen. A year later, here we are, exactly as planned, sitting together in stillness before the concert. Suddenly, he's here amongst us. The story of James and the Vintage Fair Cafe in Yeovil is that um, it, it came after we'd uh, done the video of Say It With Flowers and um, the idea of, of Say It With Flowers was that uh, this, this was music, uh, kind of music of relief, music to, to help the struggles. Um, gird people's loins as it were, give, give pause for thought. But you can see the way it's developed. It, it's, it's a mutual relationship. It, it isn't that Vintage Fair just hosts whatever's put on. It, it, it's to help them and their, they like the music that's put on and it's, it's like a whole um, it's a whole social consciousness, if you like, that, that's been built there. And this is James, you know, over the over the you know couple of years going there. It's us putting on the concerts there, and uh, it builds something. Um, thank you all for coming this evening. Um, and I'm sure James didn't know when he planned it that he wouldn't even be here. Um, and I'd like to think that we would do the same thing again next year in memory yeah. of James. So I'm hoping that you all come and maybe even more people. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so they love they love James for um, you know, donating that piano, and it says it's it's in memory of Cornelius Cardew. I mean, James was always looking for opportunities to. Uh, promote the music and the stands of Cornelius Cardew and the composers um, kind of of that school as it were you know who took up um, Cornelius's work politically musically The concert on December 17th, like a lot of James's projects, was mooted well in advance. He wanted it on this very definite date. It was the 75th anniversary of Cornelius and this, in the middle of December, so he'd booked it for that date. But one of his continual worries was his smoking. It meant he couldn't go on public transport. You know, so ev everything the government's doing, putting up taxes on cigarettes, banning smoking in public places, militias against James participating in, you know, the, the projects that he'd set in motion. Then he announced that, yes, he'd, he'd resolved the problem. He was going to book a taxi. So there, there he was, James and and, and Chris Hudson. Cardew concert, Comrades Reunion, London. How effortlessly the wagging tongue of road hauled us on. A musical concert far exceeding the sum of its parts. Dorman asks, is that man James Allen? And waves me past. Film clips and photographs down through the years. Humanists marching for human rights, shrugging off the fear. This this concert was, you know, like the, the pinnacle of, of the concerts we put on 
for Cornelius, and, I should, and I, we all sensed that. that this this was this was the event, the con, uh, Conway Hall in the middle of London with all these wonderful pianists and and uh, violinists and uh, all all the late instrumental music together. first meeting uh, with James Allen, my early uh, getting to know James, which was at Wyndham um, protest camp. And the last time we got together, which was just before Christmas uh, uh, 2011, uh, where he invited me to go to Cornelius Cardew concert in London. And um, here we go. It's called James is in the Garden. A flower pot guard of honour on the garden steps. Crow flops from skeleton of slow wooden fountain. Many moons ago you slugged up to the fire, broad backed, badger like, a kind but determined man. A pause before speaking, catching the eye. Wyndham Hill must be saved. I have an idea in mind. And then he had this idea to make a film, which at that time, in the context of the local council, was, you know, a massive step for a man to take locally. Um, and they didn't really know, know, know what hit them. I think a lot of people think that living in camps and kind of um, the NVDA side of things. They see as a last resort, they don't see it as something that should be done jointly along with the letter writing and the council meetings. It, it's a dual process, you need both really. And I, I think a lot of people see this as like, oh, um, maybe a bit premature or um, see it as like, oh, it's got to that stage, maybe there's not much hope. It's not that, it's just, you really need them running together in order for them to succeed, working in this partnership, because it, not one thing's going to stop it. You, you need to every, cover every angle and have every, all pulling all the different resources together. James Allen, a kind and generous man, was very inclined to put his concern for the welfare of others before that of himself. James Allen was an extremely gentle man. James Allen leaves us with love and Wyndham Hill. We have to look at the whole way in which our psychiatry is used in this country and to, to take some take some message from my own experience. All these are principles which anyone can adopt and and then there should be some musicians arrive and play some music. In fact, it's done me so much good that I'm no longer a psychiatric patient. Tonight's event is due to the drive and determination of a special survivor, James Allen, who runs Yeovil Area Advocates, which has done a lot of good work over the past nine years. This is in Yeovil. And amongst many things, has organised a library for clients, donated a pool table and a bench, as well.
well as advocated on behalf of many clients. There are various people in, who work in psychiatry who are trying to do their best and they do work long hours and do it. But on the whole, they work on the simple principle, see the symptoms and find a drug to match it. Symptoms should, should enlighten psychiatrists as to the cause of mental illness. Instead, they see symptoms as spots, like someone who's got uh, uh, measles, cut, and they cut the spots off, but they don't attempt to cure the disease of measles. Every year, there are two million new cases of depressive illness in this country. There are 4,000 suicides, of whom, of which about 3,000 are attributable to depression. 1% of the population suffers from schizophrenia. 1% suffers from dementia, though at opposite ends of adult life. And I'm afraid that problems in children, drug abuse, addiction, um, abound. Drugs have made big advances for, for the psychiatric patient, but only uh, by virtue of the fact that, that they that used as in conjunction with thorough and searching analysis of causes of the illness itself. A lot could be done to change the way in which psychiatrists deal with their patients for, um, to tr treat, to be like other scientists, deal with symptoms to lead to causes and use causes to suggest uh, remedies. Only if they do this will a major advance be made for the for the for the many many people who are mentally ill or will become mentally ill in this country and throughout the world. The mentally ill should not be second class citizens. People who who are born born have a have right as a result of being human. These rights cannot be taken away. These right, the sick should have the same rights as the people at work. People have rights by dint of being human.